I'm Harriet Vanceball, Associate Professor of Medicine at McMaster University, and I'm so honored to have with me today Professor Mike Gibson, Professor of Medicine from Harvard Medical School, who is Principal Investigator of the AGES II trial, and he's here at ACC 2024 to present the trial results at the late-breaking clinical trial session. Welcome, Mike. So nice to see you. Thanks for having me on today. Um, before we start discussing the trial, I wonder if you would tell us about apolipoprotein A1 and the rationale for the hypothesis that you tested with the AGES-2 trial. Well, this has been a 20-year odyssey. Uh, CSL was kind of getting rid of this ApoA1 and all the blood that they were collecting to make blood products. And 20 years ago, they came to us and said, you know, could this stuff do anything to help people? It is the building block. It is the building block of good cholesterol or HDL. What we do know is that people who have low ApoA1 levels and poor cholesterol efflux, that is the capacity to suck the fat out of macrophages, they have worse outcomes, both in the outpatient clinic, but also very importantly in the setting of a heart attack. And even 30 days after a heart attack, those people who had the poorest efflux had by far the worst survival. So we hypothesized that if we had a drug that it could improve efflux, and we do, it's human, ApoA1, uh, that has you know, been modified just a little bit to stabilize it. We know that that improves cholesterol efflux. And so we tested the question, can we improve outcomes by infusing human ApoA1 right after a heart attack? Sure. So um, tell us about your trial design. This was a phase three, multi-center, double-blinded, placebo-controlled, event-driven trial. But tell us about the protocol. You had to have had an MI. And by an MI, we mean both STEMI and non-STEMI. About half the people had STEMI, half had a non-STEMI. You got the drug after your cath or placebo, waiting a few hours to make sure the dye had all cleared out. And then you got four infusions of either the human ApoA1 spaced apart by a week or placebo. And the placebo matched the color of human ApoA1. It's slightly yellow and a little frothy. To get into the study, you also had to have some risk factors. You had to have multi-vessel disease. That was a requirement. Plus, you had to either have drug-treated diabetes, or you had to be old or have peripheral arterial disease. So these were high-risk patients. And we followed them up. The primary endpoint was at 90 days, a traditional cardiovascular death, MI stroke, MACE endpoint, and the other secondary endpoints were at 180 days and 365 days. Sure. So tell us what informed this regimen of four weekly infusions and how were those infusions delivered from a healthcare process point of view? Well, we had done a previous study uh, called mm -hmm. Aegis One, where we looked at the highest dose and found it was the best in terms of reversing cholesterol efflux or improving cholesterol efflux. So it was safe, better than two grams, the six gram dose. We don't really know, to be perfectly honest, uh, if later infusions would be better. What we do know is that the biggest divergence in outcomes after a heart attack was in the first 30 days depending upon your efflux. So we tried to match the timing of the infusion with the divergence in outcomes. Seeing that early divergence in outcomes also led us to pick an early endpoint. Now that's very odd for a lipid lowering trial. Usually, you know, you pick an endpoint years later. So we picked an early endpoint because we thought, you know, the difference would emerge early. And where were the infusions delivered? sort of an ambulatory size? A lot of different, or an yeah, a lot of different places. Um, could be in the cath lab holding area, could have been in the hospital. 
I uh, could have been in an ambulatory holding area, a drug infusion center, but the goal was to get these infusions in before the patient left the hospital. Now, some of them got it across the street and say a private practitioner's office, but the goal was to get it on as soon as possible during the hospitalization. Sure. So this was a large trial. I mean, it was large. Tell us about the sample size and the baseline characteristics of the groups. The sample size was 18,200. Why did we need a sample size that large? Because the event rates in the setting of MI are going down a bit. We mm -hmm. at first had two risk factors, but we're having about a 30 to 40 percent lower event rate than what we wanted. So we enriched to three risk factors. We needed about 900 to 1,000 events to get the job done. Uh, that was what we planned on. And that was necessary to achieve the 90% power uh, to see what we thought would be a 20% difference uh, in the two treatments. Sure, um, a nice global mix of patients. Tell us about the demographics. Well, you know, Consistent with a lot of trials out there, women were underrepresented and we tried our hardest to get more women in. We came in at about 25% women. Usually when you look at the gender mix in MI, it's about 30% women to maybe 35%. So we came up short. Uh, we continue our efforts in that regard. Uh, the people were in their 60s, uh, half end STEMI, half STEMI, uh, and 60 six percent or two-thirds of them had diabetes okay and any co-interventions uh, tell us about the medical therapies that the two groups received about 92 percent of patients had a pci so about eight percent had medical therapy we really wanted to enrich for medical therapy because we thought well you know if you didn't have all these vessels treated uh, you might be at higher risk. We also did not restrict the sites in terms of doing complete revascularization. That is, they could run around and dilate all the vessels they wanted. Uh, they could bring people back, back at a later time to have a non-culprit vessel worked on. So we did not restrict complete revascularization. And what was your primary endpoint and event rate? So the, the primary endpoint was cardiovascular death, MI, or stroke. Uh, we did not achieve statistical significance there at 90 days. When you look at 180 days, you know, it was close, but no cigar, a p-value of 0 0.076, similarly out at 365 days. So that's the primary endpoint data. When you look at the secondary endpoint, pre-specified secondary endpoints, it was the components of the composite. And there we did see a significant reduction in MI at, nine, at 180 days, but not at 90 days with a strong trend all the way out to a year. But when you look at cardiovascular death and MI, Again, we did see a benefit at 90 day, 180 days rather, again, a strong trend out to a year. There was absolutely positively no difference in stroke. The lines were superimposed. Remember that stroke has many causes. One is ischemic, but other causes are embolic, uh, small, also small vessel disease, uh, nothing there at all. So those are the primary results, but then when you look at the exploratory analyses, and these are hypotheses generating, we found that those people who came in with hyperlipidemia had a bigger benefit. No surprise, if you have some garbage, you may need garbage trucks, but if you have no garbage, you don't need many garbage trucks. There we found if your LDL was 100 or more on entry, and by the way, everyone's on statins, we saw a 36% reduction uh, in, in MI and in death in MI. Uh, and those benefits persisted all the way out from 90 days to 365 days. There is a highly significant p-value for interaction for LDL at baseline and treatment effect. Death, 
death was also reduced uh, in this cohort uh, of high LDL patients. So bailed on the primary endpoint, if I had to do it again, and by the way, this is the first time anyone had done a trial in this area, so we really had nothing to guide us, we thought we'd see a benefit early. We kept thinking, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I hope we see the benefit persist. But the way the curves mm -hmm. behaved is they diverged over time rather than having the usual ACS early separation. We think some of that is because so many people had complete revascularization. So the culprit lesion was largely taken care of. And you know many of the events were over uh, in other areas that may have been untreated. And it took a while for those events to emerge. That being said, what's fascinating, and I have to admit a little unexpected, we did see a reduction in stent thrombosis early on, I mean, in the days, in the days after the intervention. The APOA1 does have a bit of a antiplatelet effect and obviously has a plaque stabilizing effect. We know from human studies, a single dose got rid of about half the fatty plaque in arteries in the leg. So maybe by delipidating some of the uh, plaque under the stent, we reduce stent thrombosis as well. Sure, so a neutral effect on the primary endpoint, but small risk reductions that were consistent through the follow-up period and a hint in the secondary analyses of a potential reduction in myocardial infarction at 180, and 365 days. If you had to execute this trial a second time, what would you change? Well, you know, you always learn something. Uh, I think we learned a lot. One is that if you don't have a lot of garbage, you don't need garbage trucks. So if your LDL is below 100, probably not a lot of benefit there. So I think moving forward, uh, a better population is the hyperlipidemic patient at baseline who's on statins. I think the other thing we learned is there's not much there in type 2 MI, kind of makes uh, sense. The other thing we learned is that the benefit really probably emerges a little later than we thought. We thought it emerged early, but it emerged later. Paris continued to separate over time. So we probably would have picked a later time point, like 180 days. But you know, it was the first time anyone had ever done a trial in this area. So, you know, you take your best shot, see what you find. Sure. We should touch upon the safety findings. Would you tell us about those? Yeah, there was a slight excess of hypersensitivity reactions in the uh, infusion group, the APOA1 group, four events versus 14. Uh, but on the other hand, when you look at renal events, renal impairment, uh, AKI, there was actually a significant reduction in AKI with the, uh, with the infusion. So things kind of went in uh, two different directions. Of course, anytime you infuse a, a human biologic like this, you're going to see some, some hypersensitivity reactions. So that was not unexpected. Sure. So a well-designed trial that established small risk reduction with CSL-112 in patients with acute MI and multi-vessel disease, a well-tolerated drug. And while you didn't achieve statistically significant um, treatment effect, there were consistent reductions with treatment across many secondary endpoints, um, consistent with potentially a benefit with longer term follow up or in certain subgroups. Thank you so much, Mike Gibson, for being here. Congratulations to you and to BAME for this very impactful trial. Great. Thanks for having me today.